Agreed. We are agreed. Thank you. We turn now to uh, topical questions, and we start with question number one from Anas Sawa. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to provide reassurance to communities in the wake of the Christchurch terrorist attack. Cabinet Secretary Aileen Campbell. Our thoughts and condolences are with the victims, their families and communities affected by this dreadful act. The First Minister has sent condolences on behalf of Scotland to the Prime Minister of New Zealand. We stand in solidarity with Muslim communities across the world. The First Minister, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice and myself have visited and been in contact with Muslim communities in Scotland, including a visit to Glasgow Central Mosque on Friday to offer reassurance and our heartfelt support. Police Scotland has stepped up reassurance patrols around mosques and increased engagement with all faith communities, giving advice on how people and places can stay safe in these troubling times. We must stand united against Islamophobia and all hate. Everyone should be able to feel safe as they go about their daily lives. Scotland's diversity is our strength and we value and appreciate our relationships with our diverse faith communities and welcome their contribution to our society. And that's our one. Presenting officer, we send our deepest condolences to the family and friends of those that lost loved ones in Christchurch. We also send a message of solidarity to the millions of people hurting in New Zealand and across the world. This was a devastating and despicable act, and let's be clear, it was the act of a terrorist. In the aftermath of this latest tragedy, it is important that we unite and work together to confront hatred in all its forms. This is not someone else's fight. Don't leave it to anyone else. This is a fight for all of us. One of the issues raised with me is the ongoing security concerns at places of worship. No one should have to fear for their own lives, especially when in a mosque, a church, a synagogue, a mandir or gudwara. There is a places of worship security funding scheme available in England and Wales. No such scheme exists in Scotland. Will the minister urgently consider this and commit the government and agencies to work with all our faith communities to deliver it? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I thank Anas Sarwar for his remarks. I associate myself with much of what he said around the act of solidarity that's so necessary at this point of grief and uh, vulnerability for so many. Um, the recent visit to Glasgow Central Mosque by the First Minister and uh, Hamza Yousaf, they committed to explore further what the Scottish Government could do to provide reassurances to all faith communities and their places of worship, including exploring the issues around safety and security and, of course, touching on the issues around the funding that Anna Sarwar uh, mentioned. So we are working uh, through that and we'll continue to keep Parliament and uh, the member involved as those discussions develop, bearing in mind the, the real plea and call from the communities around needing that extra reassurance and support from their parliament and from their government at this uh, incredibly stressful and uh, vulnerable time. And that's our Minister, for that answer, but just do stress that this can't just be an issue that we consider in the, well, the issue is still hot as a topic, but it needs to be something that needs to be urgently considered uh, in the weeks and months that follow. Uh, President Officer, I'm sad to say that this tragic attack didn't surprise me, and it probably didn't surprise Muslims across the UK and across the world. The us versus them rhetoric, the sowing the seeds of hate and the othering of our fellow citizens has become all too common. Security at our places of worship is one thing, but security and belonging at our homes in our everyday lives is equally, if not more important. While social media has opened up our world and I believe it is a force for good, it has also allowed people with extreme views to amplify, recruit, organize and fundraise. That simply can't go on. What action will the Scottish Government take to engage with social media platforms and make them understand their responsibilities to help create a fairer and more equal world? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, again, I, I thank Anna Sarwar for raising those points and in particular those issues around social media and the amplification of messages of hate, those toxic messages that do so much damage. Uh, I chair uh, uh, an action group that looks to, to try and establish much more cohesive communities and tackle the prejudice that he talks about and certainly those are the issues that we are, are looking at and we'll continue to maybe further investigate what more we can do around the platforms on social media. Uh, but I think also uh, being elected that we are in a privileged position to be listened to and to influence more generally I and mean, I think we can list, use that privilege in one of two ways we can show that leadership the empathy and the resolve to build a tolerant and peaceful and respectful uh, world and communities and to reach out to those who feel threatened and vulnerable and fearful and celebrate the diversity or we can also 
or we could use that position to, to choose to stoke up hate and use that toxic, toxic language and that practice of othering. Uh, that's what we've seen too much of. And so we cannot remain immune from the consequences of that toxicity of language that many uh, choose to use uh, uh, that will inevitably bring uh, consequences like we have seen in New Zealand. So I think I stand with uh, Anna Sarwar that we should all resolve to call out hate, promote tolerance and respect, show solidarity with our mu Muslim communities and friends who need our support at this time and know that we love and cherish uh, what they contribute to our uh, diverse Scotland and we should explore and continue to explore ways in which we can to, to, to call out hate and make sure that we can use every avenue op open to us to make sure that we can have that peaceful, tolerant Scotland and make sure that we can cherish our diversity, which it preaches uh, tolerance and respect. Liam Kerr to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I associate myself with the Cabinet Secretary's comments as to the abhorrence of the attack in Christchurch and the comments made thus far. Uh, we also extend our deepest sympathies to all victims of this horrific act. The Cabinet Secretary is right that governments can and should take steps to reassure communities across Scotland, uh, yet it is often by simple acts of unity and togetherness that we defeat such evil. Anna Sarwar is absolutely right. This is a job for all of us together. Uh, so what steps does the Cabinet Secretary suggest Scots can take to show minority communities they are welcome neighbours, colleagues and friends? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think people can reach out to the Muslim communities in their areas. I think we show, show we, we saw such a great strength of solidarity through some of the uh, gatherings in Glasgow. Uh, I know certainly that the Muslim, Muslim leaders that I spoke to were really just appreciative of that simple act of a phone call to reassure and stand in solidarity uh, with them. But more generally, we can call out that hate. Uh, we can call out that practice of othering. We can call out the toxicity of language that we see too often in political discourse, in the media and social media platforms uh, as well. And certainly that was one of the reasons why myself and Hamza uh, Yousaf uh, were jointly launched at the Tackling Hate campaign, which showed uh, that we wanted to encourage others to call it out and to use either the police as one way in which you can call out that hate or to use the third sector, uh, third party reporting centres uh, as well if you wanted to do so anonymously. So again, we would underline that message to call it out, uh, to report it to the police or to use those third party reporting centres. Uh, but also more generally to reach out, not just at the point where there is something bad that happens, but to build cohesive communities, which shows that love and respect at all times and not just at the point when that needs to be much more uh, firmly uh, understood. So those would be the ways in which I would uh, urge members to encourage their constituents to reach out, but also to ensure that we underline that message of calling it out when it happens. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Fulton McGregor. I'm uh, grateful that Anna Sarwar's question gives us the opportunity to, to stand together with a, a message of uh, love and solidarity for the people of New Zealand. Revulsion not only at the violence, but at the white supremacist values that underpin that violence, but also to express, uh, I think, some inspiration. I, I've certainly felt that from the, the responses that have been shown uh, by the people of New Zealand, who it seems clear are not going to give ground, not going to cede ground uh, to the ideology of hatred and fear, uh, but are going to uh, affirm uh, their embrace of, of diversity uh, and, and multiculturalism and respect. The comments that have been made about social media are accurate, but I do think we also need to acknowledge, admit to ourselves, that as a society we have permitted a situation to develop where our mainstream media is awash with anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim sentiment. <laughs> sentiment which is all too often taken up by those in positions of power, who frankly should know better than pandering to those attitudes, and we've seen that far too much. What does the, the Scottish Government uh, have to do in relation not only to the security aspects and the policing aspects of the far-right threat, which has been so deliberately cultivated, but also in relation to our education system? What are the opportunities that we have to positively affirm the values of a society that we want to be? because that surely is absolutely essential, not just to, to counter the far-right threat with security, but to counter it by building the values that we wish to express. Cabinet Secretary. 
Uh, and I thank Patrick Harvey for raising uh, his points and I absolutely would uh, agree that there is a, a moment where people do have to admit that the toxicity of language that's used, not just in the mainstream medias, but in many parliamentary chambers uh, across Europe, has allowed that toxic language far too often and created that culture where, uh, unfortunately, things like this will inevitably happen. And I would certainly cite Danny Garavalli's uh, article that she wrote in The Scotsman, which called out some of that, uh, uh, that behaviour uh, and would encourage members uh, to, to read that. And also about calling out the crocodile tears that often get shed at the point of something traumatic like this happening. Um, Patrick Harvey raised a couple of uh, good points in terms of education. Uh, absolutely, the, the capacities within Curriculum for Excellence ensure that people are in getting the understanding of the need for uh, tolerance, respect, that understanding about being an effective contributor to our society uh, when they emerge into their own adulthoods to make sure that they uh, our people, our young people are aware of the, the need to be tolerant and respectful. Uh, and of course, there is uh, more that we can always do. And certainly one of the issues that I'm looking through through the action group, the Tackling Prejudice Action Group, is around what more we can do to link across to other areas of education, youth work, for instance, uh, about how we ensure that our young people emerge uh, to become uh, people who are effectively and positively contributing to our society uh, as well. But you know, on, on this and on any other issue, I'm happy to engage with members on what more we can do, if there are other things that we should be doing, if there are other ways in which we can work, because this is not something that is just owned by one political party or the government. This is a whole, it transcends party politics. This is an issue about the type of country we want to create, the type of Scotland we want to be. And it's about respecting diversity, respecting other cultures and appreciating what that brings uh, to our country and how we can continue to promote that and reject hate and to ensure that everyone feels valued and who contributes so much to our country. And Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. As the convener of the Racial Equality Group in this Parliament, I'd like to associate myself with the words of Anas Sarwar, the Cabinet Secretary and the First Minister, earlier in the week. We are clearly all agreed that hate crime in any forum cannot be tolerated. How can the Scottish Government promote a sense of collective responsibility that's been talked about already and to promote that it's everyone's job to stand in solidarity with one another and call out hate in all its forums? And how can people in communities feel confident and be encouraged to report hate crime when they encounter it? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, and again, uh, I thank uh, Fulton McGregor for his question and would use the chance to respond by underlining some of the points that I made to uh, Liam Kerr. Again, you know, in September last year, myself and uh, Hamza Yousaf launched a hate crime campaign in partnership with Police Scotland to encourage witnesses to report hate crime. Uh, and again, we encourage people to call it out, either people who experience it or have witnessed it, to call out that hate crime or to report it to the police or using one of the many third-party reporting centres across the country. Uh, because again, it's that recognition of having strong, resilient and supportive communities, the importance of community cohesion uh, in ensuring that there is one Scotland where people do live in peace and everyone has the opportunity to flourish in our country and feel valued and supported uh, in doing so. Thank you for those contributions. We move on to question number two, Joan McAlpine. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what support it has given to create jobs at the former Pinnies in Annan. Cabinet Secretary Fergus Ewing. Uh, Presiding officer, the Scottish Government has provided a £1.7 million regional selective assistance grant to support the creation of up to 120 jobs at the former Pinnies plant in Annan. Working with Scottish Enterprise, Scottish Development International and Dumfries and Galloway Council, the Scottish Government sought to find a new investor. Together, we have been successful. On Friday 15th March, Atlantis Pack purchased the site from Young Seafood and announced a £9 million investment plan. This is fantastic news for the people of Arran and the south of Scotland, following a very difficult 12 months since the decision to close Pinnies. Attracting a new international investor to the site sends a strong message that Scotland is open for business and that we are determined to work collaboratively at a national and local level to secure investment and jobs for the people of Scotland. Joe McAlpine. Thank you, and I agree. It certainly is fantastic news for the people of Annan. Can I ask how will this venture contribute to inclusive growth in the local economy? And can you also indicate what part, if any, the UK government played in securing this success? 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, the UK Government wasn't involved in the, the work that we did. The work was driven and carried out in Scotland by our public agencies. And I'd like to pay particular tribute to all of those public servants involved. They did a superlative first-rate job. Mm. And it's uh, not often enough that they get the credit for the hard work they do, which in this case resulted quite directly in securing this investment in Annan, which so desperately needed it. It regards the significance, uh, obviously, on the 13th of March, we, we uh, uh, announced the investment of, uh, proposed investment of £85 million in the Borderlands Inclusive Growth Deal over the next 10 years, and this will help to drive forward improvement on skills, digital connectivity, tourism, and infrastructure uh, development. We're slightly disappointed the UK government hasn't matched the level of our investment uh, as they are putting in a, a lower sum of 65 compared with our 85 million. Joe McAlpine. Thank you, and I would associate uh, myself with the Cabinet Secretary's remarks about the hard work of the officials and indeed his disappointment at the, the, um, the lack of uh, equivalent investment for the Borderlands deal by the UK Government. He will be aware that the factory has been closed for some time and the workforce to some extent has dispersed. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update on what has happened to the workforce and how successful the Scottish Government has been in finding these employees uh, alternative employment? Yeah, Ms McAlpin is absolutely right to raise this because there were sadly over 400 redundancies at the site last summer. Since then, um, the uh, public sector working as Team Scotland have worked tirelessly in order to help individuals get the support they, they need and deserve. Firstly, through PACE, Partnership Action for Continuing Employment, uh, and secondly, through the public sector holding uh, two uh, jobs opportunity fairs, one in July, one in October, one of which I attended, which again was a very well run event, which I saw for myself in Annan and provided, uh, I, I think, the opportunity to 200 individuals to meet 19 employers and recruitment agencies exhibiting over 350 vacancies. This is all solid valuable work done by, by public servants who are wholly committed to trying to help those individuals who suffer the hammer blow of redundancy provide uh, other uh, uh, opportunities or employment. And I'm pleased that a substantial number of, of those, a majority who are made redundant, who sought to, have, to do so, have found new employment, training, self-employment or other opportunities. Oliver Mundell to be followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. I think uh, people living in Annan will be extremely disappointed in what is a universally good news story uh, to see politicians attempting to play petty politics uh, and, and claim uh, all the credit uh, when they weren't interested in uh, stepping in immediately at the time to provide the relief that families were looking for. That said, uh, this is, uh, it is fantastic news uh, for Annan, um, and I would wonder if the Minister uh, can tell me the current number of former Pinney's employees uh, who are still looking for employment uh, and what the government will do to ensure that those individuals get first access to these vacancies. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, well, there's been a huge amount of work done, as I've described already in, in my answer, sub, uh, substantive answer to Ms McAlpine's question. Uh, can I say that in July 2018, the South of Scotland Economic Partnership announced funding of up to £250,000 uh, 140,000 in 2018 and 110,000 in uh, 2019 20 to create the local solutions team. That team is developing projects and opportunities for economic uh, development, uh, identifying sites for business expansion, for example, clearance of the site at Stapleton Road in Annan next to the Pinney's uh, site. Uh, and as I say, I, I have uh, uh, seen the response from well, Mr. Mandel's keeping up a constant sort of barrage, sort of voce, but if he wants to listen for a moment, uh, I can assure him, uh, I can assure him that, uh, uh, that a substantial number of those who were made redundant last year, who have sought employment, have found new employment, training, self-employment or other opportunities, uh, and I'm delighted that that's the case. And yesterday's uh, announcement, presiding officer, will now provide the opportunity for uh, up to 100 people to obtain employment over the coming year when production is hoped to restart and recommence in pennies in the autumn. And I, I think that's a terrifically good news story 
uh, and uh, we're working hard with the company to see if in future there are other opportunities to build on that further in other ways. And I was very pleased to have an initial discussion at my meeting with Mr. Baghat and his, uh, his family yesterday at Annan, which was extremely cordial. And last thing I would say is that uh, uh, Mr. Baghat, in his short speech, actually mentioned the public servants by their Christian name and said, I'm able to speak to any of these individuals at any time. He really appreciated that. So I think it's right to, pr to heap praise on those individuals who work in the public service who help to secure this terrific result. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. And can I echo the Cabinet Secretary's thanks to all the Council and, and Government agencies staff involved in helping secure a, a very welcome buyer for pennies. Like the Cabinet Secretary, I had the pleasure of, of meeting the new owner, Kishaf Bagat, yesterday, and I was encouraged by his desire to grow the workforce, hopefully beyond the initial planned 120 posts. But could the Cabinet Secretary confirm that given the welcome financial support through Scottish Enterprise, that, that workforce will benefit from the Scottish Government's Fair Work First criteria, including full trade union recognition and collective bargaining. And given the fact that hopefully the post will grow, but it's still currently below um, the number that were lost when pennies closed, can the Cabinet Secretary say what more the Government will do to support and grow the jobs prospects for the people of Annan and surrounding area? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, I think Mr Smith makes a series of very fair points. And to answer his first question, I can confirm that the RSA grant funding that, uh, has, been, that uh, has been agreed and will be provided is one of the first under the Scottish Government's Fair Work First initiative, which is committed to fair work, job security, fair pay, and a greater voice for workers. As part of the RSA application, the minimum salary at the plant will be in excess of £18,000, above the £9 per hour uh, living wage, and the majority of salaries are well uh, above uh, that amount. He's quite right to say that uh, a greater number of people lost their jobs than are the new jobs being provided at this stage, or at least in, uh, in the autumn of uh, this year. And a huge amount of work is continuing to be done, both in working uh, with Mr. Bagat and his, uh, his team, but also with other potential employers in the Annan area. And I'm very pleased that the local solutions team is playing an active uh, part for that. And I hope Mr. Smith would agree with me that if the UK government were prepared to match the Scottish government's level of commitment, 85 million pounds instead of their 65 million pounds, I think it's just a matter of fact to report that that would be an additional 20 million pounds that could be invested in the south of Scotland, which would help Annan and the whole of the rest of the area. Thank you very much. Uh, and that concludes topical questions.